the book of Titus, it's way over there, getting close to the end of the, of the, of the New Testament, right after 2 Timothy. And then Jude, the book of Jude, which is the next to the last book in the Bible. Um, uh, I guess for phone people, that's hard to do, but I tell you to bring Bible. Titus chapter number 2, Titus chapter number 2, and then the book of Jude, only one chapter. First we'll look at Titus chapter number 2, and um, look at that great verse here, verse 11. And we're going to read a little Bible here now, and I'm going to preach. Listen, Titus 2.11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. There's the word you want to look at this morning, godly, in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and so forth and so on, the Lord coming back. The word godly, it said we should live godly. Now Jude, the book of Jude, the only chapter, verse 14. Look at verse number 14 in the book of Jude. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. This will be the second advent when he comes to crush his enemies and set up his kingdom to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly. Look at that word, ungodly. Among them of all their ungodly deeds. So you start talking like that nowadays and people think you're some kind of a, a old fanatical, crazy, medieval nut. Listen, that's Bible language. Just because our generation moved away from the Bible does not change what the Bible said. They're ungodly deeds. Oh, you shouldn't judge. That's their chosen lifestyle. Bible says ungodly deeds, which ungodly, which they have ungodly committed, and all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. Uh, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust. And their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons and admiration because of advantage. That means making room for somebody because they're famous or rich. Giving people favors because of who they are. But beloved, here's what we ought to do. Remember you the words that were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference. That's what we're going to do this evening. This evening, tonight, others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now there's two words there I want to look at this morning. One of them is godly. The other is ungodly. The Bible said ungodly speeches, ungodly sinners have ungodly committed. And then he tells us in Titus and here that we are to live godly. And then he tells us how to do it. So I want to preach this morning on living godly in an ungodly world. That's a task. Living godly in an ungodly world. It's no accident that the book of Jude was placed in the Holy Bible right before the book of Revelation, next to the last. See, we don't just believe the words are inspired. We believe the chapter and verse markings are right where they're supposed to be, and the books are in the correct order, laid out in premillennial order in the Old Testament. Uh, we'll get into sometime. The book of Jude is right before the book of Revelation. Now, I'll tell you what, what we're going to talk about today. Living godly in an ungodly world is like swimming up a river. It's pushing you this way, and you're going against the grain, against the current. If you just float, you'll go down with the rest of it. 
All you've got to do is backslide and do nothing. All, you'll just float down the river with the rest of the world. It's like running into the wind. Have you ever run into the wind? The wind's blowing real hard and you run toward it. You can feel it pushing you back. It's like running up a hill. You ever run up a hill? I run up my driveway every day uh, when, I, when I run at home. And, uh, and boy, I don't know, I didn't even get tired until I hit that driveway. And it's going up, 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 up like that. It's tough. Now listen, that's what living godly in an ungodly world is like. We're living in an ungodly world, people. It's, it's unbelievable. You don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to look 10 feet in front of you to hear and see continual bad news. I just saw a thing on that uh, coronavirus that everybody's talking about right now. It's on the news. I think 78,000 people have been infected uh, over. I don't know how many have died. And um, it's not that big of a deal, supposedly, here in the United States yet. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But it's always something like that. I just, at, just at random, uh, my, the news pops up on my phone, and it, this little article, that little article, that little article, and I don't, I don't usually read it. I, once in a while, something catches my eye for it's local or something like that. And uh, last night, I just looked on. I, I just wrote down uh, these things. Just last night, I mean, not, no big deal. Wasn't no. I, I, I just wrote down a 25-year-old woman was murdered the other day and skinned. Uh, 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 her skin took off of her body. Three-year-old was found dead on a school bus. Um, missing kids, they've been missing for a few days, were found, good news, in Daytona Beach, Florida. A six-month-old was found the other day dead in a cemetery. Mom has now been arrested. An officer kills his wife and two children just after their a day at Disney uh, uh, Studios World down in Florida. A man hanged himself after murdering his girlfriend and raping and killing her daughter. Killed them two and then himself. And then it's just constant stuff about uh, the news. The, uh, this Weinstein fella, whatever his name is, uh, was just, oh my goodness, uh, you uncover some kind of, and it just gets deeper and deeper, and the wickedness that, that's going on in the, well, is, can anybody here disagree the world's ungodly? I mean, brother, we're living there. He said, in the last time, ungodly. What's ungodly? Not like God. Anything that's not like God is ungodly, like, like God. So godly would be like God and what God would want. Uh, it's unbelievable what's going on in this world. It, it, and, if, and if we say anything, uh, we're the bad people. We're, we're judgmental. We're mean. Uh, it, you shouldn't say anything against somebody's lifestyle. Let me tell you something, people. Uh, listen to me. If, if, if they have a right to talk about uh, what they don't like about us, we got a right to talk about what we don't like about them. We do. And, but we're living in that terrible, terrible, terrible time. I want to give you just a little bit of advice this, this morning. And if you're smart, you'll listen to this advice. And all you young people here this morning, we got a lot of young people here this morning, going to have a lot tonight. Listen to this advice. How to live godly in an ungodly world. Number one, number one, uh, don't panic. We knew it was coming, right? <laughs> I, people say, did you hear about, I think there's, a, there's, a, there's a gay guy running for president. D d are you surprised? We knew that it was coming. Didn't we know it all these years? Hadn't we read the Bible? Didn't we know that corruption would come? Of course we did. I, I'm, I remember uh, years ago thinking that 2020 was, would be a sci-fi movie. You remember uh, back then, 2020, that, that sounds impossible. No, oh, nobody will make it to the end. Well, here we are. Welcome to 2020. Welcome to an ungodly world, buddy, that me and you are living in. Things are not like they used to be. Things have gone a long way. You know what they call it in the world? 
progress, progressive. They call that making progress. No, it's not, buddy. You've come a long way, baby. Just you went the wrong direction. Uh, that's that's the problem. We went down. Uh, kids can get birth control now, medicine, uh, and not even tell their parents. Uh, uh, people are. Uh, he, he didn't he say perilous? Didn't he say it's going to be bad? He sure did. I read about uh, that little girl. Um, Elizabeth Smart, uh, who was um, who was uh, only 14 years old uh, when she was abducted by that couple, a man and a woman, and they kept her nine months. You've heard that was a very very well known case. That case happened to have a good ending. 99 out of 100 don't. And Elizabeth Smart, uh, they they finally found her, and she's rescued, and she's going around the country now. Very, very eloquent speaker, very, very t uh, articulate lady, really she is, uh, considering what she's been through. And she talks about the torture and the molestation that we she went through daily, 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 daily. Now the Lord said that it, uh, you know how you know it be in these last days. He said it would be as it was in the days of Noah as it was in the days of Noah. If you go back and read the, as it was in the days of Noah, here's what the Bible said. I, I can't get too plain in here. We've got kids in here. But the Bible said that the imagination of men's heart was only evil continually. You know what that means? Their mind stayed in the gutter. It's constantly some dirty, something filthy. I mean, they, they, they can't look that chair right there without making some dirty comment or some filthy remark. Listen, you know what I'm talking about. If you work out there, anybody in here has got a job, you work, you know what it's like. Don't let yourself get used to that. Don't let yourself become accustomed to that. We knew it was coming. We knew the Lord said it was in the days of Noah. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, the people that stand, they talk all on primetime TV. The president uses words on primetime television now uh, that you could, that kids, you had to be on a pay channel to say words like that just about 15 or 20 years ago. I'm telling you this morning, you hear me and hear me well. Uh, we are living in an ungodly world. How are we going to stay godly? Don't panic. We knew it was coming. Hunker down. Put your uh, uh, toboggan down over your ears. Put the pedal to the metal and keep flooring it for God and get the job done God's called us to do. I'll say that. The days of Lot. Uh, you know what caused the days of Lot? Pride, idleness, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. You know what will pervert a nation? Having too much. You know, people say, well, uh, people say, well, uh, why is there more drugs in America and drug abuse in America? Because we've got more money, obviously. Where would you sell drugs if you was a drug dealer? I mean, if, if you, uh, you wouldn't go to some poor country, you wouldn't go to Haiti, you'd come to America. Uh, uh, pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. That means a bunch of people that have their belly full and don't have to work and plenty of free time on their hands will turn into a pervert. And we've lived to see the time of the normalization of perversion. It's if you're not careful, you'll even as a Christian, I've heard Christian people say, well, you know, it's not really for me, but if that's what they choose, blah, 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 blah. No, we cannot get used to perversion. We cannot make perversion normal, people. You can't just, I mean, listen, brother, when we're living in a generation that celebrates and uh, the, how, how did Ellen get a TV show? How did RuPaul ever get anything? And people like that, I'll tell you why. Because we're living in the days of Lot and of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's an ungodly world. It's an ungodly world. Amen. Uh, so I heard about just here, here the other day. A uh, man told me, I said, uh, my little boy wants to be a girl now. They're going to have an operation. Eight years old. Eight years old. An eight-year-old don't even have no business knowing there is such a thing as that. We are, don't panic. We knew it was coming. Stay right with God. 
drag queen story hours in public schools and places where they brought in their normalization of perversion. Uh, they're, they're, they're bringing schools up north where they have uh, Muslim come in and teach kids how uh, what Ramadan is and how, how we should accept Islam and the Bible's not allowed and Christianity. You know why? We're going upstream, y'all. It's ungodly. We're godly. Trying to live godly in an ungodly world. Don't panic. We knew it was coming. Don't get excited. We knew, and I'm going to tell you something. If the Lord don't come, it's going to get worse. Number two. Number two. Stay unattached to this world. Stay unattached to this world. I read uh, the other day, or saw the other day, where uh, a sheriff in California, sheriff deputy, came and knocked on the door. Mama came to the door. Is this so-and-so yet? Do you have a child? And so on? Seven-year-old boy and the sheriff's deputies came to their house to talk to their seven-year-old because he was sharing Bible verses with his friends at school. Yeah. The sheriff. Like he's a criminal. And, and they're saying, you, you cannot do this. They said, look, kid, you can't do this. I mean, it, it, he should be allowed to do it. But if he couldn't, why not have a guidance counselor say, honey, you might send the cops to a kid's house and say you can't share Bible verses? Listen, people. Listen to me. If you're not careful, the, the, the protesters, whatever they are, can throw rocks and bottles at the police and the headquarters tell them, don't do a thing. Don't fight back. Leave them alone. Just hold your shield up here. The police can't even get them. I always thought if you threw a bottle at a policeman, you was in a heap of trouble. See, see this stuff? It's ungodly. I, I'll guarantee you, we're in Morgan, North Carolina. This ain't New York City. Go over here in town. Don't really do it. I'm just using an illustration. Throw a bottle at a policeman and watch what happens to you. You'll be in jail. And you should be. You know what they ought to do to that crowd? They ought to give them, well, there's this expression, their frustration. Well, express yours and arrest them. You know what they ought to do? They ought to come over with a loudspeaker and say, you got five minutes to disperse this crowd and calm down, or we're going to tear gas a whole bunch. That's what they ought to do. You say, oh, Brother Danny, that's anarchy. That's tyranny. You, you've lost your mind, brother. Listen, you, you can't let the ungodly take over the world. You got a right to protest. You can protest all you want to. You don't have a right to hurt people and fight people and cut people with bottles and break people's private property and knock through walls out of buildings and bust glasses and stuff. So, yeah, listen, we've got, I don't, those of you who've been on song, we used to sing, I don't want to get adjusted to this world, to this world. Um, uh, I, that's a good song. You don't hear that. You don't hear that much in churches anymore. I don't want to get adjusted to this world. I don't want to get adjusted to this world. Don't want to. What that means is we, we don't want to settle down in this world and, and, and be like them. And like them. Uh, did you know we are a different bunch? We are unattached. Did you know what the word church means? It means called out assembly. It's a ecclesia. That word, like Ecclesiastes, that word ecclesia means a called out assembly. The Lord called one over here, called one over there, called one over there, and then every Sunday we're called out. Our church sitting right here today, cars sitting out there in the parking lot, is a testimony to the world that we are not with them. We're called out. A separate group. A called out assembly and we meet here every Sunday and people meet all over the world saying we are not a part of you. We are not a part of this world. We are in the world. We are not of the world. We don't, we're unattached to you and one day the Lord is literally going to call us out of this whole world. That's the whole thing about being a church. Live unattached. Live unattached. I understand you've got to raise kids. I know you've got to work for a living. 
I know you've got to pay your bills. I know you have to, it's okay, and there's nothing wrong with having a nice house, a nice car. There's nothing wrong with making a good living. Nothing wrong with that at all. If you work hard and you get what you get honest, praise God, hallelujah, enjoy it. But don't ever forget, this is not our home. We're pilgrims. The Bible said we're pilgrims and strangers passing through. You know the world out there? This world's their home. And all they can think about is how to make the world a better place, how to make the world a better place, how to make the world a better place. That ain't our philosophy, brother. Our philosophy is we're leaving here. This world's shot. It's going down. Come and go with us. Let's get out of here one of these days. We are unattached no matter what we do. You're under attack. Don't get attached to this world. Don't get your hopes built down here. When I tell when we, when we have a ball game over there and I lead in prayer, a lot of times, a lot of times I'll tell them guys, they all circle around the other team. I don't know. Some of them guys even go to church. And I say, look, guys, basketball's a game. It's a game. It ain't even important. It's bodily exercise profiteth little. And ain't nothing wrong with it. But it's a game. Life, it ain't no game. You know what I'm saying? We're in this world, but we ain't attached. We work. We make a living. I paint my house when it needs it. I get the oil changed in my car. I put tires on my car. You've got to live in this world. You've got to. But there should be something inside of a child of God that's saying, I work here, I pay my bills, I try to pay for my house, but Lord, anytime you're ready to take us, you take us because we got something better up there. Unattached. Amen. Amen. Lord, in mercy, brother, every child of God ought to just look, go out with one eye up yonder and one down here, buddy. I look up and say, this could be the day that the Lord comes and gets us out of here. I'm not attached to this old world. Uh, you know how to live godly in an ungodly world. You know the best way to live right in an ungodly world is be looking for the Lord to come. He, he that hath this hope in himself purified himself, even as he is pure. It'll make you live right. It'll help you stay your thoughts right. It'll help you make the right decision. Say, unattached, unattached, unattached. Raise your kids right. Amen. Uh, looking for that blessed hope. Number three, number three, right quick. Here's some good advice. Many of you that know me for years know this. I've I figured this out in 40 years of doing this. Here's some good advice. People say, Brother Danny, I don't want to be a pessimist, but I want to be over-optimistic. Give some good advice. Number three, hope for the best. Prepare for the worst. Take what comes. Keep your mouth shut. Thank God you ain't in hell. It's the best way to live your life, I'm telling you. I've seen people do it every way you can do it. You may say, well, we shouldn't just go around thinking something bad is going to happen. I didn't say that. I said, hope for the best. But if you hope for the best all the time, you're getting ready to get your head knocked off. You better expect the worst. Oh, that's awful, isn't it? Oh, you're so pessimistic. Oh, you should be positive. Oh, well, you're a nut and don't know it. Maybe you do know it. I hope you do. Listen, bad things are going to happen. You know, I heard one preacher get on to me and said, well, you shouldn't speak it. Are you, are you crazy? You think if you don't speak it, nothing bad's never going to happen to you? I got news for you, bud. It's going to happen whether you speak it or not. Right. Man born under trouble as sparks fly upward. Now, I'm telling you, if you try to live right, you shall suffer persecution. You're not going to get out of this world. We, through much tribulation, enter in the kingdom of God. It's all the way through the Bible. You can't get out. We're going to have trouble. Somebody's going to get sick. Somebody's going to... I told, I told Corey, she's a doctor in Asheville right now, unless she's got out. Uh, she's had a tough time. With that I mean, really tough. A lot worse than what we thought. And y'all keep praying for it. And I told her this. I said, honey, uh, just, just hope for the best. Hope for the best. Hope for the best. We're praying God will touch it. We're praying God. Expect the worst. Don't expect, no tell them what's liable to happen. And then if no matter what happens, thank God you ain't in hell. Amen. Listen, no matter how bad it gets, we ain't in hell. 
And then we ain't going neither. Glory to God. I mean, you know how to live godly in an ungodly world? Stay the, uh, stay the course, brother. Amen. God's been good. I, God's been good. I, I, I hope for the best. I thank God for our health. My family's all healthy except for that little issue with her. And uh, praise God for that. But I ain't dumb. I know as we get older, things are going to happen. Uh, there's going to be sickness. There's going to be heartache and heart attack and blood pressure and strokes and stuff. I mean, it happens to everybody. Just thank God you're not in hell and thank God for his blessings on your life. No adversity. Adversity is really better for you than prosperity, to tell you the truth. You're more apt to live right in adverse times than you are prosperous times. I read a story about a man and a woman named William and Mary Veith in Scotland, 1680. Let your mind go back for three or four minutes to 1680. No electricity, no cars, no way to communicate with people across the country or across town unless you went and found them, talked to them face to face. No telephone. No, no refrigerators, microwaves, stoves, oven, just a house and a fire in it. And William was a godly Presbyterian preacher. His wife Mary, him had, had a couple of children. This is in Scotland in 1680. At that time, it was against the law to be a Protestant preacher. The Catholic Church did not want to lose control of the countries and said it was against you could be arrested for being anything against the Pope or the Catholic hierarchy. And they knew that sooner or later William could be imprisoned for what he preached. Sure enough, sure enough, one day, one evening, soldiers bust through the front door, took him and grabbed William and pulled him out of the house while his wife was screaming and crying. Couldn't call the cops. They was the cops. They owned the cops. They put him in prison many, many miles away. There's that little woman left for them kids in bitter, cold January weather. No government help. No food stamps. No, no calling a lawyer and saying they violated. No First Amendment rights. No Constitution. Buddy, it was bad. She cried herself to sleep at night. They put him in prison for what he believed. She poured out her soul to God. She claimed verses like, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lead not thy own understanding. She claimed verses like, uh, 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 for, Fear not what man can do unto you, and so forth and so on. She finally said, I'm going to see him, and got on a horse and rode in a snow in bitter cold January, past a preacher's wife, on a horse, almost froze to death. She got there at midnight, and the guards wouldn't let her in to see him because it was too late at night. They said, Well, let's see him tomorrow. That girl got out there beside a fire all night long so she wouldn't freeze to death. See, things don't always go good just because you're a Christian. I'm telling you, people, one kid can be sick and they don't get a visit or a car and the whole family quits nowadays. What if they put you in prison? What if you sit outside the fire all night keeping freezing to death trying to visit your husband? The next morning they did let him... Let her see him for a very brief, short visit and literally tore her away from her husband and said, that's the last time you'll ever see him. She cried. She cried. I'll never see my husband again. His enemy that had him locked up was a wicked man by the name of Thomas Bell. He said, he'll be hanged tomorrow. Mary went home crying and praying, crying and praying. You see, now we say, well, I'll just call me a lawyer. I mean, and I'm, I'm glad we got a system, y'all. 
back then they, people didn't have nothing to depend on but the Lord. And the time's going to come and may come for us when that's all we got to depend on is the Lord. We'll find out where our faith is. We're going to live godly in an ungodly world. Are we going to compromise and say, okay, I'll quit preaching. The Lord wants me to stay here and take care of my family. You got to watch that kind of thinking. And buddy, you know what happened? Thomas Bell went to a party that night and him and a bunch of soldiers and they all got drunk. And they got drunk and they told him, he said, man, you too drunk. And he got on a horse and took off and left that party that night. And the next morning, they found Thomas Bell in a river where he fell off that horse and he's froze, his arms froze like that. And when that happened, he was the main instigator against William and they let William go free. And that old boy went home and spent 40 years in the ministry living with his wife and kids. You know what she did? She hoped for the best. She expected the worst. She figured they're going to kill him. And she just took what come. And God honored that. God blessed that attitude. You see, if you'll do right and humble yourself before God and do the right thing even when you don't want to, even when the world's going the other way, somehow or another, God will make it up to you in this world or the next world. You can't go wrong. Live godly in an ungodly world. Last thing I'm saying, I'm through, and this will be quick. Here's some good advice. Since we're in an ungodly world, try and live godly, take everybody you possibly can with you when we leave out of here. Go grab somebody and get them saved. 2 Timothy 3, 14 said, Continue in the things which thou hast learned. Listen, listen, there, I believe this not, might not happen for the rapture, but I believe they're going to discover something that disproves the Bible. They're going to come back with something from Mars or dig up something. Or, not, not really disprove it, but everybody will think it does. And there's, going, there's great delusion, strong delusion coming after the rapture. And I believe, y'all listen to me, I believe they're going to find something or somebody's going to come up with something. They're going to, scientists are going to come up with something and say, well, see, there it is. All these years, these stupid people believe the Bible. And right then is when your faith is going to be tested. That's why God put there in that book, Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Being assured, get out in a pine thicket somewhere, get your Bible, and get out and say, God, be real to me. Make it real to me, God. No matter what tests we have to face, God, make it real. Help me to stay right in an ungodly world. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't. There's too many Christians saying, well, I heard one girl say, I'm a recovering independent Baptist. You're just a pitiful little nuts, what you are. Listen, you, you crazy thing. Listen, people, be a Bible-believing Christian. You don't have to recover from believing what's right. If it's right, believe it. If it's wrong, ditch it. Live godly in an ungodly world. Take your family with you. Make sure they're all saved. All my family, as far as I know, is saved. My girls are saved. Sons in law are saved. All the grandkids are saved. Except Big T, and we're waiting on him. His time's coming soon. And Frankie. Frankie crawled up. He got up this morning and came in, and he just grinned and crawled up on me this morning. I was trying to read my Bible. So I read it out loud, and I read him the Bible. And I thought, I ought to get, I said, that's the Bible, Frankie. Yeah, Bible. And I thought, they ought to see, they ought to, do your kids see you read the Bible? Do your kids see you praying and down on your knees? You better, you better learn how to live to them godly in an ungodly world. Listen, what mom and dad do in, 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 in temperance, your kids will do in excess. Ever how loose you are in your living, your kids will be double that. You better, you better, Play a straight road, brother. You better live right, live godly in an ungodly world. Take them with you, take them with you, take them with you. You know where I got my faith? Oh, I want it from my mom. I got it from my mom. I got it just like Timothy. Paul told Timothy, you got it from your mom and your grandmother, Lois and, and Eunice. And then people, she got it from her mom. You moms have no idea how important you living right in front of your kids is. They're watching every move you make and they're patterning their life after you. Then your friends, people you live beside, people you work with, call them. 
if a flood was coming and everybody didn't have TV and phone and you knew a flood was coming in your neighborhood, you'd go to your neighbor's house and say, look, y'all, they're predicting a flood. I thought you might want to make plans to get out of here. And that's exactly what's happening. That's what, exactly what's going to happen. The Lord's coming. Judgment's coming. Take everybody you can with you. You know what I do? If you're right with God, get in a bus ministry, man. Get in, bring a crowd. I heard about a man the other day, heard a testimony. He said he'd been in the bus ministry like 40, 40 something years. Man, what a testimony. I ain't got about 30, 37 or 8. He'd been in the bus ministry over 40 years. He's taken somebody with him when he leaves this world. You know how to live godly in an ungodly world? Grab somebody and take them with you when you leave out. Let's stand. Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Christians praying. Nobody's talking. Ask yourself a question. Don't stand there and think, well, this is for everybody else. This is for all these people. I got it all figured out. It's for you, friend. It's for you. It's for every person in this room. She's playing softly. I wonder how many meet me here in this altar this morning. Say, preacher, I want to live godly in an ungodly world. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on, mamas, daddies, teenagers, husbands, wives, visitors, members. Let's get in this altar this morning. Say, Lord, I want to live godly in an ungodly world. Amen. Amen. We're praying. We're getting ready to pray. You come right now. Come on. Maybe you're here this morning and say, Preacher, I really, really, really need to that, and I need to get right with the Lord this morning. Why don't you come on right now? Why don't you come on right now? Why don't you come on right now? Amen. 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 Oh, God, help us this morning. Oh, God, help us this morning. Holy Ghost. I pray in Jesus' name that you'd do a miracle in every one of our hearts right now. Put somebody on our heart right now that we can get to come to this youth service tonight. Put somebody on our hearts right now. My heart, everybody here's heart. Somebody that we can try to get to come to the youth service tonight. Please, Lord, do it for Jesus' sake. Do a miracle here tonight. Oh, God. Oh, God, please. God, please. Help us, Lord, we pray. Lord, I pray for these on the altar this morning. Lord, that you'd touch every heart and every life. Do what ought to be done in our lives. Bless now tonight. Save souls. Change life. Save somebody's life and soul tonight. God, get a hold of these kids. And our bus kids that will be coming back tonight. And our, our bus workers, bless them with rest and a, and a, and a rested heart and mind. And Lord, get them kids here this evening. We'll thank you and praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Some still praying this morning.